Dear friends, it's day 842 of the unprovoked Russian invasion of Ukraine and just a while ago internationally wanted war criminal Putin, also known as Huilo, revealed his demands to Ukraine. He offers a ceasefire on two conditions. Ukraine gives Russia four territories and obliges not to join NATO. Ukrainian forces should be completely removed from the Donetsk and Lugansk national republics. Херсонской и Запорожской областей. Причем обращаю внимание именно со всей территории этих регионов в пределах их административных границ, которые существовали на момент их вождения в Украину. Как только в Киев заявят о том, что готовы к такому решению и начнут реальный вывод войск из этих регионов, а также официально уведомят об отказе от планов вступления в НАТО, с нашей стороны незамедлительно, буквально в ту же минуту, последует приказ прекратить огонь и начать переговоры. After 842 days since the beginning of the Russian invasion of Ukraine, Putin finally revealed his true reasons behind starting this war. He wants territory. I mean, of course, it was obvious since the very beginning uh, of the invasion, but uh, there is more to this. Let's ask ourselves, why did he decide to reveal these demands exactly today? And the answer is, yesterday Ukraine and the United States signed a historic agreement which clearly states that the United States will be supporting Ukraine until Russia is defeated and the Ukrainian territories are free from the Russian terrorists. Also broadly announced Russian offensive of Kharkiv collapsed in the most miserable way as soon as Ukraine received a tiny portion of the promised military aid from the United States and the allied countries. Coincidentally, it also happened exactly after the collapse of the Russian stock exchange. Friends, Putin realizes that he is completely unable to wipe out Ukraine. He knows his war industry is incapable of continuing this war long enough to achieve significant gains, because in 842 days of, of war uh, with Ukraine, Russian invaders didn't manage to capture any of the major cities of Ukraine. The biggest success of year 2024 for the Russian army was merely capturing a tiny town of Avdivka with a population of around 30,000 people. That's approximately three times less than the monthly Russian losses in dead and wounded. The population of Kharkiv, for one of the major cities of Ukraine, is 1.4 million people, just so you could understand the difference. Putin realizes his dying economy and war production cannot compete with the combined forces of the European countries and the US, which have combined uh, annual GDP that is 40 times larger than in Russia. At the same time, these two years were enough for the NATO countries to accelerate their military production, which is also something that Putin clearly understands, because in 2022 he expected a winning blitzkrieg that turned into a blitzkrieg and resulted uh, in the attrition war, which Russia clearly cannot win. Another obvious thing here is that the Führer of the Terrorist Federation is a good actor, being a KGB spy. His current demands can be considered as uh, a probing attempt as soon as his troops become completely unable to support their attacks with enough vehicles, uh, which the Terrorist Federation cannot reproduce fast enough. There is a possibility that uh, he will reveal some kind of different conditions. Conditions. Another evidence indicating that Putin's initial position is shaking is that he's ready to negotiate with the Ukrainian government, which he recognized as illegitimate, and his spokesman uh, stated numerous times they will never negotiate with current Ukrainian government. Then there's another question. Can Putin be trusted? Historical photos of 2003 show him signing a memorandum which recognized the Ukrainian borders, including Crimea. Unfortunately, no video survived showing this very event, but I got a bunch of different footage showing just how much Putin can be trusted. Крым не является никакой спорной территорией. Там не было никакого этнического конфликта, в отличие от конфликта между Южной Осетией и Грузией. И Россия давно признала границы сегодняшней Украины. Это были российские солдаты или нет? Это были местные э, силы самообороны. За спиной сил самообороны Крыма, конечно, встали э, наши военнослужащие. Они действовали очень корректно. Это, это факт, мы никогда его не скрывали. Наши вооруженные силы 
прямо скажем, блокировали вооруженные силы Украины, расквартированные в Крыму. Крым – это часть украинского государства. И мы не, не можем вмешиваться во внутренние дела другой страны. Россия проводит миролюбивую внешнюю политику. Мы всегда уважали территориальную целостность украинской державы. В наши планы не входит оккупация украинских территорий. Мы никому и ничего не собираемся навязывать силой. Появление российских войск под Киевом и у других городов Украины связано не с намерением оккупировать эту страну. As you can see, there's really no agreement the war criminal Putin hasn't violated so far. And the very fact he insists so much uh, on Ukraine not becoming a NATO member is a clear indication of his further intentions, which is reorganizing, regrouping and attacking Ukraine one more time. He cannot do much right now for different reasons, uh, like uh, his foreign recruitment campaign, failing in Nepal, China and African countries. They brought uh, no significant results. Also, his terrorist groups cannot continue attacking uh, without proper support of their vehicles. In order to solve these issues, he only needs time. Uh, he also needs time to develop new informational strategy to destabilize countries supporting Ukraine and sow discord among his adversaries. Also, he probably realizes the results of the upcoming elections in the US that will not be beneficial for terror Russia in any possible way. That's just my assumption. Putin uh, didn't say a word about sanctions, of course, because uh, he anticipates that BRICS will probably save his failing economy. That's why he doesn't care much about the Western market. However, there's uh, one more thing that I really, really find dangerous. The demands to Ukraine were revealed literally days before the Global Peace Summit, which takes place in Switzerland very, very soon, with hundreds of international representatives expected. The summit will be dedicated to the Ukrainian peace formula, which addresses the ways Ukraine can achieve this victory and punish Russia for its atrocities committed against the Ukrainian citizens. And there's no doubt that Putin's conditions will be discussed or maybe promoted by some of the countries. To summarize, I can say that the Russian demands to Ukraine are a clear sign of Putin's weakness, who bit uh, more than he could swallow and is now trying to win some time for his army and improve the misinformation campaign that is already taking place in your country. Right now, I'm sure more than ever that the terrorist Russian regime can and will be defeated with the following reparations paid not only to Ukraine, but also to the respectable foreign taxpayers who support Ukraine. With that, my friends, I wish you a beautiful day. I'm Operator Starsky. As always, be safe. Also, subscribe, share and leave your opinions in the commentaries because they're very, very important. Guys, we'll see you next time. Goodbye.